All right, it is a beautiful spring morning. I know technically spring doesn't start until March 21st, but believe me, here in South Louisiana, spring has already sprung. And if you're like me, when it's springtime, you start thinking about crappie, which we call sockele. I've already made a successful crappie trip this year, and I'm heading out again to make it happen. Hopefully, once again, water temps are a good bit warmer, currently 57 degrees. Supposed to get up into the mid 70s today, so you know those temps are going to come up a little bit. Got a full moon in two nights, so things are definitely prime. Kind of a halfway overcast sky. Definitely going to have some sun poking through, but I guess you call it partly cloudy. Definitely optimistic. We got the conditions right, right time of year, all that good stuff. But you never know with this fish, they will drive you crazy, that's for sure. And that's why they're irresistible. So come along with me. Let's see if we can catch a few. Man, I tell you what, we may catch fish this morning. We may not. I don't know. <laughs> but there's never been a prettier morning for targeting these fish than today. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm starting with this Slab Hunter Minnow. It's Bobby Garland bait. I've had good luck with this year. Discovered this thing in a pool test I did. I got that on a 16th ounce jig head. I'm going with my cast and retrieve method. That's it. Oh, I got hit already. I got hit already. 100% a hit. Second cast. There's a fish. There we go. Well, that's a bass. It's a start. Whoa, broke my line. <laughs> That's a sign I might have needed to retie. Now, that bass is bigger than any sockeye you're going to catch, so I'm actually going to keep him so I can show you how I cook my sockeye. Hopefully, we'll end up with some. All right, first fish of the day was not a target species, but it's a start. Oh, there's one. Oh, shoot. All right, I'm one for three on bites today. That fish is hooked up for a couple seconds. Oh, there we go. That's got to be a sock. That's a good one, too. Oh, yeah, it's a real nice one. Oh, yeah. Stay on, baby. Stay hooked up. All right, yeah, it's a good fish. My goodness. That's a really good one. He tagged it too. Look at that fish. That's awesome. Big black crappie. Right by that cypress tree right there. It's the fifth bite I've gotten. It's only second connection. But that's a good one. Part of the deal with doing this, lots of snags. Just got to kind of go in and get them. And typically reel down to it and push it off and get it with no problem. And of course, as we get a little later in the season, <laughs> you got to be wary of wasps and snakes. Could be some snakes out today. Probably not a wasp, though. You know, I've always historically fished sockeye with corks, and I've gotten away from it. I've been doing this technique for the past two or three years just casting and retrieving every now and then, kind of shaking the lure a little bit. It's got its good points and bad points, no doubt. I mean, when you're cork fishing, sometimes you can sit in one spot and, and just really load up on them. They are a school-oriented fish. With this technique, that seems to happen less often. You just kind of cover water and pick up stragglers. But this, to me, is just a whole lot more fun. It just is. You fish more aggressively. I don't really like just cork fishing slowly, just not my favorite thing. I mean, look, if I get on fish and the cork's going down, obviously that's a blast. And I probably will throw a cork a little bit today. But these fish hit incredibly, incredibly hard. I'm fishing four pound mono, fishing a 1 16th ounce micro jig. So everything's really small. But man, the way these fish hit, just staggering. You know, you think of a, a sockeye as being such a sedentary, just lazy fish, but they're predators, man. When you feel them hit, you know that 
That fish is a predator. Like he is, he's mad at that bait and he's wanting to kill it. Oh, oh man, I felt him destroy it. That was a great hit. Hopefully he stays buttoned up. Definitely a soccer lay, no doubt. And it's a good one. Oh, he's not that good. He is a keeper. Not as big as the last one though. All right, we're putting a box together. That's so awesome. Best part about these fish is how they taste. So good. All right, this slap hunter minnow, been a revelation. Really glad I did that pool test and discovered this thing. It looks so good. Obviously, it not only looked good to me, it looks good to these fish. Again, that fish just drilled it, just drilled it. All right, I'm up in my average. That's three for six. Three connections, six bites. 50%, not great. <laughs> Hopefully it improves, continues to get better. So once again, just one bite, that's it. Made a bunch of casts in this area. Caught that one fish. Seems like if you get one to bite a cork, you can throw back in that same spot and catch four or five or six, maybe 10. But it's not the case, or at least not that I found fishing this technique. You gotta keep moving. I guess the smart thing to do would be check it with a cork. Let me do that. I don't know, I just find cork fishing mind numbingly boring. Back to the tight line. This is a lot more fun. It's the only time of year I target these fish. It's because they move up to spawn. You'll be able to catch them shallow for maybe, maybe two months at the longest. Not the longest, probably six weeks. I usually fish them two or three times a year. That's about it. Even though this river's close to my house, really convenient. Maybe, a, maybe at most a 10 minute truck ride, maybe a 10 minute boat ride. A lot of this matted grass on the river this year. I know a lot of people like to do something called doodle socking, basically breaking up holes in the grass and fishing those holes. Not something I've ever done. Something I should maybe do, given the amount of grass in this area this year, lots of it. You know, you know 100% there's some fish under there. That's where I'd be if I was a cyclone. Completely protected. Just get in there, spawn, away from predators. And I don't know what it is about this style of fishing, but it's just so relaxing. You always feel good after a day of sockelet fishing. You know, I love throwing big topwater baits, trying to catch giant speckled trout. I like throwing lures to redfish, whatever else I can get to bite. Definitely love that. But this is just a different pace. Really a lot of fun, really enjoyable. Oh, 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 goodness. Yeah, dude. All right. Whew. I made a cast that got snagged at the base of that cypress tree. Popped it off. Made a couple of cranks. And he smoked it. Oh, yeah, you were hooked well. You had to pop that line to get free. Oh, good Lord. There we go. There we go. So much fun catching these things. And of course, the most fun is thinking about eating them. <laughs> There's a fish. Oh, goodness. All right. Good hit. All right, look at this guy. That actually might be a white. He's real dark because this water's so pretty, but I think it's a white crappie. There's a fine line when fishing this way between fishing too fast and fishing too slow. First few times I did it, I got a lot more snags. I was definitely fishing too slow. Much fewer bites. It's 
kind of a magic speed and you got to figure it out based on your reels ratio so how fast it's bringing that lure in my boat is positioned in roughly four to five feet of water right here is 4.7 that's kind of been about the average and i would guess i'm and i would obviously it's much shallower close to the shoreline I guess I'm retrieving it in general about halfway of the depth. So retrieving it a little bit faster, closer to the shore and kind of slowing down as I get closer to the boat so that it declines in that water column. And a lot of times they hit you real close to the boat. I don't know if it's fish that are staging out here on the drop off or they follow you or what, but you can't give up on a cast Got to work it all the way in, because you never know when he's going to hit you. Oh, boy, did he tattoo it. Goodness. You're not even that big, dude, but you smacked it. <laughs> you want to get it before one of your big buddies could, huh? I mean, I'm grateful to have you, but you're not all that big. There's one. Good hit. Ooh. This might be a bass. It sure is a bass. All right. Ooh, man, he took that bait deep. All right, that was a super fun trip. Sockley trips always are, particularly when they're biting that well. This is just prime time of year. Lots of good days still ahead. Like I said, I don't target Sockley a whole lot, but I'll definitely be hitting them again this year because it's just a blast and they're so good. And this is the best part of catching Sockley is you get to eat them. I'm going to take you through a recipe I've been doing lately, kind of developed it over a few weeks, and it's absolutely delicious. Everybody who I serve it to loves it. Serve it to your friends. They're going to think you're like some executive chef, uh, but it's actually very, very easy. Just a few ingredients it requires. I think I got them all here, although I may run across something as I'm moving along that I forgot to put, but I'll tell you about it then. All right, first thing, got my fish. Of course, I've got that packed in ice. That's how I store fish in the refrigerator. It'll last up to two weeks. We got some pepper. We got some salt. We've got some bouillon. You can also use just chicken broth or chicken stock, uh, whatever you like. I use this better than bouillon stuff. It's pretty good. Got some green onions. Got some capers. You may not have these, obviously, in your pantry. Not everybody keeps them stocked. I do, but these are certainly an important part of this recipe. And then we've got some tallow. You don't need tallow. You can use any type of cooking oil that you like. Uh, I just find fish sears really, really well with this stuff. I kind of introduced you to it in, uh, in a video just a couple weeks ago. So get some tallow if you don't have any. But if you just have cooking oil, that's totally fine as well. And then over here, I've got two pans heating up, a larger cast iron skillet, and then one that's a little bit smaller. We're gonna get everything rolling in this one first. All right, and already I forgot one key ingredient, white wine, gotta have some white wine. Super important. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna throw this white wine into the smaller cast iron skillet. Pretty good amount. We're gonna reduce this a whole lot. I'm gonna turn up the fire, get it rolling. All right, this is where the bouillon comes in. I heat it up. I don't know, maybe about a cup of water. Mixing my bouillon in there, They're nice and mixed. And I'm gonna add that to my wine, which is already bubbling. While that's all going, I'm gonna chop up our green onions, get those ready. All right, I thought of another ingredient you absolutely need, butter. We don't need this yet, but we are gonna need it. I'm gonna leave it out. I got these green onions all chopped up. Don't eat them yet. Capers off to the side. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and start cooking our fish. Oh, by the way, I do have rice going here in the Instant Pot. It takes about 20 minutes, so by then, everything else should be ready. All right, if you saw the video I did of cooking out in the marsh, I kind of told you then I've really gotten to just using salt and pepper on really good tasting fish, which obviously Sakalei is. And it's really kind of important for this dish because the sauce that we're gonna put on the fish adds so much flavor. All right, we're salted and peppered. Our pan should be good and hot. This is where the tallow comes in. 
We're gonna add that to our pan. We'll be searing fish in no time. By the way, Mrs. Marshman's sitting outside enjoying some sunlight. She's gonna be my taste tester today. She absolutely hates being in videos, so <laughs> we gotta cut her a little slack. Give her a little thumbs up in the comment section. She'd love to hear it. All right, first batch is in the fryer. All right, that's searing. I'm stirring our eventual sauce. It's definitely reducing. It's probably about half the volume that it initially was. So we're getting there. We want to get it to maybe about a quarter of what it initially was. All right, batch number one, probably ready to flip. Yep, good sear. Good sear on those. All right, these are ready to come off. Hungry? Yes. You're gonna be eating soon. Sorry. You're gonna be eating soon. Hopefully you survive. Hopefully you make it. All right, here we go, batch number two. All right, it's easy to forget about this, but we're right about where we need to be. Really, really close. I'm gonna go ahead and dump these green onions in. Now, I made a lot of green onions, probably a little bit more than I normally do, but nobody ever said, you know what, this dish has too much of green onions. They're obviously really, really good. We're just gonna let those cook down just a short amount of time. All right, and this caper jar, you can tell, is almost empty, but that's about how many we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. You could probably make this without capers, but I mean, why would you? <laughs> capers really kind of make it. Cook those down a little bit. Oh my goodness, that smells incredible. Four ingredients so far, but I'm telling you, it smells so good. All right, we're gonna turn the fire down to one, or low, whatever you got. And now, a crucial step, we're gonna add butter just in pats. We're gonna let those melt. And for this part of it, I like using a fork to kind of whip that butter in. And of course, all the while I'm keeping an eye on my second pan of fish. Don't want those to burn, obviously. All right, another pat of butter. Look how good that looks. Believe me, it tastes even better than it looks. Gonna go with another pat of butter. And we're also gonna flip our fish, because I'm thinking that's about ready. Yep, perfect. All right, one final pat of butter, and that's gonna be it. We'll be eating soon. All right, this is how I like to serve this. Get some of our rice. Top it with some fish. And then we're gonna dump some of the sauce, spoon some of the sauce over the whole thing. All right, we're gonna give this one to Mrs. Marshman, but we gotta get some roasted veggies first. Make it a complete meal. All right, how's that look? Believe me, it tastes better than it looks. Let's see what Mrs. Marshman thinks. Good as usual. Delicious.
I know that it is, and now I get to eat it. Go sockele fishing, make this dish. Actually, you can make it with any fish you catch. Obviously, you need fish that holds up well in a pan. You can do it with speckled trout, I definitely do, but it doesn't hold together quite as well in the pan. Redfish, black drum, flounder, all that holds together really well, and obviously sockele does as well. All right, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. You can do that by clicking that button right there. Also, here's two videos YouTube thinks you'll like. Check those out if you get a chance. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh or in the river by my house or in my kitchen, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.